As part of our ongoing coverage of COVID-19, we talked with Minister Greg Rickford, who is the Minister of Everything, according to Premier Ford. He's got a lot of responsibilities, and we thank Minister Rickford for taking the time to talk to us. It's James with Net News Ledger. Joining us by phone in the new social media way we cover COVID-19 is Minister Greg Rickford, the riding member from Kenora, or Kenora Rainy River. I always mix those up on you, Minister Rickford. Well, you've got Kenora federally and then Kenora Rainy River uh, uh, provincially. If the provincial boundaries are, are, are different from the federal for the first time uh, in a very, very long time, so it's not easy to keep track of. Right now, it must be it must be just twenty four seven almost for members of the the Ford government, the Ontario cabinet. You guys have been busy. Yeah, you know, I woke up this morning and and I got to say I was just a little bit tired. Um, but I think our our hard work and our efforts are paying off. The feedback I'm getting from, from uh, people that uh, I uh, I'm in contact with, most importantly, my constituents. Um, are generally satisfied, if not very satisfied, with with the way that we have been approaching this. We can always do better. Um, and one thing that I'm I'm struck by is the, the number of people who uh, who appreciate Doug Ford's leadership in particular. And um, uh, I've obviously had a tremendous opportunity to play a significant role in our government's decision making. I have a lot of experience working health and community health, public health, uh, in days gone by. So uh, it's been a very rewarding experience, very stressful, like everyone else. You're pinned down to your home trying to figure out how to manage a life that is is is, is and should be confined to your most immediate property unless it's absolutely necessary. So, you know, doing this work, but actually going through the same thing that, that every other family and person is going through uh, right now, and if they're not, they should be. <laughs> you were on a, a conference call yesterday with uh, Northwestern Ontario leaders. What would our readers and viewers need to know? Yeah, so Zoom, uh, the new Zoom virtual meetings, uh, James. But um, look, we had Indigenous leaders on there as well. Some of our Indigenous communities are so close to the city or town. You know, I'm thinking of Kuchiching uh, as it is to Fort Francis and what it means and and. Rainy River First Nation, so proximal and essentially, you know, part of the emo span, and we'll, we'll meet with other Indigenous leaders next week uh, in Kenora Rainy River. I should say I've been meeting every week with Indigenous leaders across uh, Ontario, led by Grand Chief Archibald. But the mayors and Indigenous leaders that were on our call yesterday, uh, James, uh, expressed their um, you know, expressed their concern about, uh, predominantly about people uh, visiting our beautiful part of the country and the stress and the pressure that that was going to put on us, not just in terms of our hospital capacity, but the public health uh, exposure. I've been involved in some very robust communications trying to discourage people, um, particularly coming from Manitoba, uh, from visiting uh, us. But frankly, James, as I've said earlier before, this is not a, a problem confined to crossing the provincial uh, border between Ontario and Manitoba. Um, We faced pressures in Muskoka, Halliburton, um, and the Bay of Quinte, where people from uh, within the province were going to their secondary residence to migrate, and uh, during these times, that's just not acceptable. James, our our, our, uh, hospitals and our public health capacity at the best of times are designed for a fairly static and predictable population, the con, uh, ebb and flow, the, the, um, the presence of a pandemic, COVID-19, um, tells us loud and clear that we should be staying in our, uh, in our homes, our principal residences. Um, we, we talked about homeless, uh, shelters and, and, uh, we were able to, uh, uh, through the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, mobilize some resources to help communities uh, find shelter. And I heard a little bit more about what mayors and, uh, and Indigenous leaders have identified as community buildings um, to keep those uh, open. Mining operations, obviously, we've dealt with a few mines that have decided to keep open. They are an essential service. Um, that may be difficult for some to understand, but there are certain special 
specialty minerals that need to be, continue to be produced and base metals, uh, obviously. Um, but as it turns out, many mines are starting to, to wind down significantly and go to a, to a warm... I don't, should I continue? Because I've, I've got yeah. quite a list here. Um, well, one of, the, one of the projects, the Premier yesterday in the press conference updated the list of essential businesses. And right. A lot of construction projects are ending. What about yeah. Wate Power and the development of getting power to the grid? getting the northern communities on the grid. Is that going still? It's funny you said that. I just uh, was texting back and forth with my good friend, uh, Chief David Mazakash in, um, in Mishkigogamo. And um, I told him that I would confirm for sure it does fit into um, an industrial project, so um, a critical industrial project, um, and it is for energy. So um, there's a bit of a conflict there in terms of it, you know, why it should continue, but but on the ground why it should continue. So I promised uh, uh, Chief Mazakash that I would look into it immediately, and, and not, not long after I get off this call, we'll be we'll be doing just that. I, I think the right thing to do is to sh- to shut the project down for now. I think that any risk um, of exposure to the isolated and remote communities would have significant um, uh, consequences. And in view of the, the baseline numbers that uh, Premier Ford shared with the people of Ontario yesterday, I think it's time to clamp down and shut down. So I'm anticipating that the project will have to, uh, will have to uh, wind down. The, uh, the Premier yesterday releasing the, the baseline numbers and basically sharing with the people of Ontario everything he knows. That's yeah. a bold political yeah. move. It's good to see the government do that. You know, James, we uh, we were really uh, wanting to do it sooner, but but the medical officer of uh, chief medical officer for Ontario said, "Look, you know, we 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 are doing some modeling now, but we are still dealing with influxes of people returning. More than one million people were outside our country, and a significant portion of them." in the Sun Belt in southern United States, where obviously there, there were, uh, you know, uh, outbreaks. So those positives would, would skew the data, and so we respected, as we have from the, out, excuse me, the outset, the advice of the chief medical officer. And as soon as more appropriate numbers became available, uh, we felt it was our, our responsibility to show the people of Ontario the numbers that we uh, we're looking at. There were some preliminary model modeling done on the weekend that cabinet had a, a peek at, but they were they were that those numbers were still dealing with um, the catch up work on testing for people who had had been out of the country uh, and some of that data. So um, it was a no brainer this week to let people know, and I think it was sobering, jaw dro- jaw dropping, um, and reminds us all that. Um, for the um, uh, for the immediate future and perhaps uh, longer, we're we're going to have to get into the discipline of social distancing, um, staying largely confined to our homes and and, and our communities, and, and, and treating this with the level of seriousness that uh, uh, we should. Knowledge is power, uh, James, and that was the premise on which uh, we released those numbers. Um, give people the, the power to take a stand and commit to, for themselves and for their family and for their community, um, adhering to uh, the advice, heeding the advice of the med- chief medical officer and, and, and clamping down and shutting down. Minister Rickford, thank you very much for your time. The seriousness of this issue, I think the Premier and the government are doing a good job getting the facts out, keeps the panic down. Is there anything else on the, the COVID area and, the, and, and what you need to share? Um, I know we've been talking yeah, about is. grassy narrows. There, there, there is actually, uh, James. Look, you know, there's been a lot of talk about interprovincial boundaries. We would have loved the, the, the federal government to have just laid out a national framework for criteria so that border, provincial borders wouldn't have arbitrary measures. I mean, one of the interesting things that came up was, you know, for example, in Manitoba, they've decided to stop every vehicle coming into the province. Manitoba, and there's some good principles uh, behind that. Not not uh, denying anyone unless they were manifestly um, showing symptoms of, 
of, of COVID. But right now, Canada needs to have a, a highway that gets critical goods moving east and west, James. So this is not a time to, you know, to shut truckers down and, and essential personnel. Um, but travel to, to move to your primary residences, even with uh, secondary residences, even within your province, um, is simply not acceptable at this time because there just aren't the resources in the smaller towns and cities, if any, in some instances, as people head out to their cabin for uh, on the on the basis that they think that would be a better place to be confined as we endure uh, the rules of, of COVID. So I just wanted to raise that. I wanted to just let everybody know, you know, thank that person at the grocery store. Thank that frontline worker who's providing an essential service, whether it's healthcare, police services, people working at cash registers at stores that have been deemed essential. These are all people who are doing this um, so that our lives can, at a, uh, at a de minimis or baseline, continue to function as we, uh, uh, as we fight this pandemic and endeavor to flatten the curve. That's all. Thank you, Minister. If you found this video helpful, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share this video, and keep up to date on what's going on.